In this video, we're still gonna talk about how to find the areas between curves, but we'll have to look at it from a slightly different perspective. All right, so how would we find the area of the shaded region? All right, if we try to do what we did in the last time, we would find the kind of red shaded region we would find the blue shaded region and we subtract them. The only problem with that is in this one, uh, the blue shaded region doesn't give me all the things I don't want in the red shaded region. And for one part of it, I'm finding the area between two red pieces. And that actually doesn't really work with our integrals because our integrals go from the red line down to the x-axis. So finding the area between two red things doesn't really make sense. All right, so instead what I have to do is I have to change my perspective and if I tilt my head to the side. I'm actually turning my iPad right now. Uh, if I tilt my head, I can see if I'm looking with this as the top. All right, so now the top's up here. Now it looks just like the type of functions we did before. So this blue would be the top, and we'd go down to the red on the bottom. Right. So it's really the same thing. We just have to kind of think about, could we turn our head in some direction to make it so that one function's always on the top and one function's always on the bottom? And this way we can by turning our head and making the blue the top. And how do we do that? How do we change our perspective? We change it instead of our function being, we plug in x and get out y's. That's the kind of direction we always do it. We change it so that we plug in y's and get out x's. That changes our perspective to be that way instead. All right, so here's the summary. All right, if we have some region, you can see it's focused with y is our function now. All right, the function on the right is actually the bigger one because or x values get bigger to the right. So that goes first, the one on the left goes second. All right, but we have to have these functions, that's functions of y first instead of x. All right, so in this case, we're finding the area of the region bounded by the curve x equals y squared. So now it's x equals instead of y equals, and x equals y plus six. So let's look what the graph is gonna look like. Again, you could do this yourself by kind of plugging in some values, but we're really not used to graphing things that are x equals. So these ones will kind of use a calculator to help us at the beginning x equals y squared looks like this. And x equals y plus 6. Oops. Looks like this. Right. And we're trying to do that between 0 and 3. So x equals 0, or sorry, y equals 0 and y equals 3. So y equals 0 is down there, y equals 3 is actually where they meet. So we're trying to find this area here. All right, so our integral is gonna be the integral from zero to three. Our right function goes first, right? Right is bigger value. So our right function is gonna go first, which just is our blue function, y plus six. We're gonna subtract our left function, in this case, y squared. And even though these are x's or y's, all right, taking antiderivatives and stuff is still always the same. So we're going to take y squared over 2 plus 6y minus y cubed over 3. Evaluate it from 0 to 3. Put in 3 first. And again, we will subtract when we plug in 0 because it's all y's. It all just turns into 0. 9 halves plus 18 minus 27 over 3. I get all these common denominators and combine them. All right, let's just save some time and have the calculator do that for us. It ends up being 27 over 2. All right. So same thing as we did the last video. The only thing is now we have our equations defined as x equals instead of y equals. And we just kind of do the same thing, except for instead of top minus the bottom, we do right minus the left. All right, here we want to find the area between the curves and the x-axis and blah, blah, blah. I right, just graph it so we can see what we're doing. All right, so the square root of x, x plus 3 is going to be this curve here. The square root of 3 minus x is going to be this curve here. And x equals negative 3 is right here. x equals positive 3 there. And the x-axis is there. So we're trying to find this green area. All right, so there's actually two different ways we can do this problem. So in this example, I'm going to do it the kind of way that we might have done it in the first video or before this. 
So to find this area, we can actually break it up into two areas, straight down the middle. And on the left-hand side, that is just the area under the blue curve, uh, zero, no, sorry, that's negative three to zero, of the blue curve, which was the square root of x plus three. And then we could add to that the area of under the red curve from zero to three of the second function. All right, so we could do this because the area under the blue curve is just there. The area under the red curve is there. So we could do this. I'm just going to have the calculator do it again. Let's see, integral from negative 3 to 0, square root of x plus 3. Gives me 3.464. And this one gives me the same answer. So I multiply that by 2. I get 6.928. All right, so this is one way you could do this specific problem. Right, you could just break it up into two integrals, just knowing, kind of thinking about where your area is related to your other problems. I would also get it in a different way. I'm gonna have to redraw the picture. Look at it in a different way. Instead of looking down this direction, I look across, and if I look across, then I can see every line starts with the blue function and ends with the red function. So I can do this in terms of the y values. All right, so I have to change each of these equations to be x equals instead of y equals. All right, so that's the first one. The second one, yeah, I'm squaring it to get rid of the square root. This one is at x3 minus y squared. Yep. All right, so these are our functions in terms of y. We need to figure out where they start and finish. So they're going to start at my y value, 0, at the bottom. And where does it finish? It finishes when these two things are equal to each other. So one of these two things equal to one is y squared minus 3 equal to 3 minus y squared. 2y squared equals 6 y squared equals 3, y equals the square root of 3. All right, so now my integral is going to start at 0, because right, that's the y value I'm starting at. It's going to end at the square root of 3, because that's where it's ending. I take the right function, which was my first function. No, which was the blue function. This is 3 minus y squared. And I subtract the... Uh, left function, which is the red one, y squared minus 3, dy. And again, you could go through and take these antiderivatives. These actually antiderivatives are easier, so that's the kind of the reason you would want to do it this way over the other way, because the antiderivatives are going to be easier, but I'll still just use the calculator just to make it go a little bit faster. 3 minus y squared minus y squared minus 3. dy, and I get 6.928. All right, and we compare that to the last example. Of course, we get the exact same answer. It's just two ways of doing the same problem. Right, but you can just see in this example how putting it into your y perspective might make one part harder, but the other part easier. So taking the antiderivatives here would be easier, but you're plugging in a square root of 3 versus in the previous problem, taking the Antiderivatives be harder because you have to do the uh, antiderivative of a square root, but the numbers you plug in are easier. All right, so it's all up to your preference. If you draw your graph, I right, just see how can I make this area based on the ways I can do it. All right, so here's one for you to try on your own. All right, what is the area of the region in the first quadrant bounded by the graph of x equals y squared over 2 and x equals 3y minus 4? All right, before you pause the video, let's look at what the graphs are going to look like, and then you can figure out what your integral is going to be. So x equals y squared over 2, this is going to be this kind of sideways parabola again, and x equals 3y minus 4 is just going to be a line, and it looks like this. And just as a hint, it actually crosses it at some point. All right, we're trying to find this area. I right, so go ahead and 
write your interval and figure out what that area is going to be. And the answer you should get is two thirds or 0 0.667. So again, you take the uh, interval from where you start to where you finish and that's kind of told to us. The right function is the line, the left function is the parabola.